Hi! In this video, I'll be going over the cut method and how it can be used to determine the stationary distribution of a discrete time Markov chain, or DTMC. The cut method is a useful way to visualize the long run relationships between different states in a DTMC and can be very useful at computing pi, the, standard, uh, the stationary distribution vector containing the long run likelihoods that we are at a certain state in the DTMC. The way the cut method works is by cutting the state diagram at various points and generating a system of equations based on these cuts. Here's an example of a random walk DTMC with states A, B, C, and D. Note importantly that the arrows coming out of each of these states sum to 1, as should be the case by the law of total probability. And here, we're using the cut method to get information from the state diagram. You can see that at each cut, we're comparing the flow that goes one way to the flow that goes the other, and saying that they have to be equal, weighted by the transition uh, probabilities. This should make sense intuitively. In the long run, there should be an equal chance of being anywhere in the state space. The only differentiating factor is the ratio of these transition probabilities to one another. Here we take the relationships that we calculated using the cut method and solve them as a system of equations. There is a key equation here that we haven't mentioned yet but should make sense. The sum of all the entries in the stationary distribution vector should be equal to 1. If we recall that the stationary distribution is a vector containing the long run likelihoods that we are at each state in the DTMC, then it should make sense that by the law of total probability, these likelihoods should sum to 1. Anyway, you can confirm by looking at the solution that it works. I'm not going to go through solving the system as it's pretty elementary, as you can see here. Here's another example in which we have a cyclic DTMC. It might be a bit harder to identify where we should make our cuts. For instance, if we try just cutting the BC edge, we'll get something like 0 0.5 pi B equals 0 pi C, which is clearly an issue, as it would mean that pi b was 0, and then that pi a was 0, eventually, which wouldn't really make sense. Here's how we use the cut method on this problem. The cuts that we make go all the way across, as can be seen in the diagram. Note that the pi a here is the green cut, and is the sum of the 0 0.25 pi a and the 0 0.75 pi a. And the pi b is the red cut, and it's really the sum of the two 0 0.5 pi b's. And again, we can solve the system of linear equations given by the relationships from the cut method plus sub the summing to one constraint, and we get the stationary distribution as shown. So we've seen how to use the cut method on a random walk and on a cyclic DTMC. But of course, there are other ways to find the stationary distribution of a DTMC that don't involve looking at the state diagram. For a large system with thousands of states, for instance, it might not even be possible to generate a state diagram without running into issues with computer performance. The other methods I mention here look at the transition probabilities of the DTMC as a matrix instead of visualizing them as a state diagram. The transition matrix of the example we just did is shown, is shown here. We can use these matrices to find the stationary distribution by using linear algebra. If you want a quick guide to that, check out my video on it. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.